how to cook a lean piece of meat like an eye of round roast. This doesn't have a lot of fat on it and what I seasoned it with is not the important part. In my case, I just have a little bit of, um, a little bay leaf, a little onion. I'm gonna do something else with it um, during the week. So this is just the idea of the thing. There's also just a splash of um, some red wine and some water because once the meat juices start producing, I'm gonna baste it. The important thing about a lean piece of meat like this is that it has very little fat and you cannot cook this at a high temperature when you start because it, the, 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 the protein will start to squeeze out the juices. As your meat cooks, it shrinks and it squeezes out the juices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this roast at 250 degrees. I'm sorry, 275 degrees for two hours basting and looking at this at least every 25 minutes just to make sure it's moist and then I'll assess what the situation is with it. And what I mean by that is that this is the kind of meat that needs to be cooked on one day and served either later on that day, um, once it's completely cooled and sliced, preferably the next day. All right, I have my grandkids here and they want me to see all kinds of funny videos. So 275 degrees for two hours. <clears throat> Just simply put, and another main component about this is that um, because this meat is so lean, you don't want it directly in contact with the, the bottom of your, your pan because it has a tendency to dry and cake. So I put some onions as a simple aromatic. In Italian culture, they tell you that beef goes with onion and basil, let's say, and uh, chicken and fish go with oregano and... Um, oregano and garlic. So just for, for sake of simpleness for the video, you, you put the aromatics you want to put. In Mexico, they generally use a, a lot of red sauces with beef, like guajillo chili or chipotle or different kinds of sauces. Hey, buddy. And then um, I have my grandson here. Say hi, buddy. Hello. <laughs> so we're going to put this in the oven, set the timer for two hours, but I'm going to set on my phone, I'm going to set a, a miniature timer for 25 minutes to base. 20, 25 minutes, it depends. Sometimes I, I'll, I'll just, I can smell the progression going, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just say 25 minutes. Okay, the first timer has gone off. You see the liquid has, well, it's reduced some. And... That pink color is just coming from my, my wine. It was just very diluted. It was just a little splash for that je ne sais quoi. I could certainly have slathered this with butter or something like that. But like I said, I, I don't know what, what this will become. I'm just trying to make it now and show you how to properly make a very lean piece of meat. I'll keep an eye on the liquid. Usually after the first or second basting, um, the meat juices start to run a bit. So we'll see how that goes. If I feel like it's getting a little too dry, like I'm prepared to possibly add a little bit more wine. And how I would do that would just be to literally pour it at the bottom. And let me just do it now. It's wine that you would just drink. Just put a little, the closer you get to the end of the cooking, then I, I would be more hesitant to add a little wine because um, you don't want the strong wine flavors can be too acidic and too strong. I'm still early enough in the process. Anything after this, will just be water or stock. And I don't have stock, so it's definitely gonna be water. And that's gonna be it. Now that I've added that last addition of wine, 
that will do it. And it'll just give that nice sophisticated flavor. But the key is that I know it's kind of a hassle, but it's that slow basting and keeping the meat really, really moist at a very low temperature and keeping the meat from seizing up and turning into a rubber band. Okay, it looks pretty. I, I love doing this. It's like, it's like painting my baby. All right. That's it. I'm going to put it back in the oven for another 25 minutes. All right, the next 25 minutes has passed. Okay, the, ne the, the next 25 minutes has passed. And as you can see, the beef is starting to um, like let off some of the juices. The wine is starting to kind of uh, dehydrate. Look, it's turned from that sort of light pink to a red. Yum. What do you think? How does this look, Max? Good. Do you love beef? Yes. Okay. How does it smell? Good. Okay. It smells like cow. It smells like cow? How many times have you smelled a cow? A bunch of times. A bunch of times. Okay, so now Max, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Look and learn. I'm gonna add uh, one cup of hot spring water to the bottom just because some I don't- Some snakes live in hot water. Some snakes live in hot water, really? Where? Um, they live in hot water and, and icy thing. Oh. I think it's in, I think it's called the glacier. A glacier, like in a place, like, it's like a glacier and I know what place it's from. Oh. It's a gl glacier and I'm pretty sure it's from Iceland. Oh. So is it cold water or is it like some it, kind of a... It's hot water because the rocks from under the earth uh -huh. heat up the water and it's a hot spring like a hot tub. Ooh, you know how much grandma loves that. All right, <clears throat> I'm taking this out. And, but those snakes don't weave it. <laughs> oh, that wouldn't be so fun, right? Getting into a hot tub with snakes. All right, hold on, Max. I hold know, that up. I'm pretty sure the snakes are harmless. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. You'll save me from them, right? If one jumps out. Yes. All right, putting oh, it in front. Lying. He's not afraid of snakes. I don't know about and that's that. That's like one of my pets. Buddy, hold on. We had a bunch of pets. Boop. Hold on, little kid. Um. All right, I'm putting it in for another 25 minute max, okay? So this is gonna be the third rotation. All right. This is the third 25 minutes, so now we're at 50 minutes. It's just plugging away. It's very important, Max, when you're cooking. Don't burn yourself on the edge of this. It's really hot. Okay. Um, but how does it look, buddy? Good. I want to look at the water. It looks like reddish pinkish. Yeah, it does look like reddish pinkish. And I think these are onions. Mm hmm. They are. Because look at the spiral. Look. Yeah, it's fun. It's right, right there. It's like. Mm -hmm. Look at Juju. <laughs> what a breath. All right. Juju jumped on the table <laughs> by the scissors. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> All right. Don't you dare do that catnip, even though that your name is Judith. Why? We should call her catnip when she acts crazy. You know? Yeah. All right, Cat nipples. Cat All right. <clears throat> Buddy, are you distracting me? Where's the phone? I'm holding it. Hold on, hold on. I'm almost done. Let me just do this. Look, all we're doing is basting. This is called basting, okay? When Everyone juice, basting when you're doing this. Yeah, watch your, watch your arm. It's I, a hot pan. It's hot, Max. I just took it out of the oven. It doesn't feel hot. Let me see. Put your finger on it. Touch it. Well, because it's at a very low temperature, but be careful anyways. Proceed with caution. That is not hot. Let me see. You were lying to me. I wasn't. Well, it, it's a, it Let is a very... Let me hold the phone and I'll show you. No, look, I, I understand what you're saying. Look, I can even grab it. That's why it's called slow and low. Slow and low, go to Momo. Go to Momo? Yes. I'm holding my little cute Keep basting. Oh, crap, he's trying to bite me. Oh. Mm. Mm. 
Oh, now it's Ew. hot, right? All right, this is, I need okay. to add um, the last, I'm gonna add another two cups of water. Cillian. Okay. Wait, when are you gonna have the text back? Hold on, buddy, I'm filming. You need the text back. All right, we are trying to arrange play dates. Okay. Clean up Judas. The Olympics are kicking in. Wow, we just saw the final for the the track. Robert, what was the name of the track race that we watched? Um, the 400 meters. Team? Yeah. Oh boy, that was exhilarating. Who won? Sweden. Sweet. Oh boy! Wow! What an exciting event! Woo! Oh, the Netherlands. The Netherlands. That's right. The Netherlands. Unbelievably competitive and wonderful. Okay. I would have loved the victory for the U.S., but boy, the Netherlands brought their A game. All right. I'm gonna put this back. Now I'm gonna increase the oven to 325 degrees for one hour. I could, well, I guess I'll leave it at, at 275, but I won't check it again for another 45 minutes. Only because I'm getting ready to leave soon and I don't think my husband's going to leave the Olympics and start basting this meat. So that's it. I'm gonna put it back in the oven for 45 minutes. It's looking good. All right, this was at the end of um, 45 minutes. I have to go, but this is the beauty of cooking it low and slow like this. I have to depend on my husband to continue to baste it just like this. All right, keep doing this. I'm gonna put it in for another 45 minutes and then I'm gonna have them pull it. Look at this beauty. Once in a while, my husband comes through. So I wasn't here for the last few hours. So the um, this eye round roast cooked for two hours at 275 basting about every 25 minutes then i turned up the heat for to three to 300 degrees and basted every half hour for an hour so total cooking time was three hours and now it's rested for about an hour and a half it's still very very hot i had my husband um tent it with foil and I just opened it it looks wonderful you can see that all of the meat juices have come out and created a lovely light jus which just means an unthickened natural juice look at all this just beautiful look at you little onions okay now my grandson wants me to crack this open because he wants some meat and I probably will, but I really wanted to just show what it would look like tomorrow. I'm going to carve into it because he wants some. Um, they just had pizza, so I'm going to have a little bit of time to continue to let this rest. Because it does so much better when you rest it and then, then you slice it and then you just heat it through lightly. Another telltale sign that this was very gently cooked is you see that the onions that were cooked under the roast are still very much intact. The ones that were a little bit more exposed um, are, you know, a little bit 
more caramelized and slightly broken down. But the idea here is to just get that good meat flavor to let it rest and to give it that juicy flavor. Now, if you're trying to get it all caramelized, it does look dark. And I think um, I just attribute that to the fact that I put a drop of um, soy sauce, a little bit of drop of Worcestershire. And um, I also put some of that red wine, but it should still have a very appealing like color very light it should not be overly caramelized because that means that you went too far so i just wanted to bring up that point you saw how raw look look at this this is still very much intact which is a good thing well it's been a long and inconsistent day I just carved into this. Um, everybody is dying to eat it, but you can see how juicy it is. I don't want to squeeze all the juice out, but every last little piece is yummy. It tastes wonderful, developed. A lot of times um, if you try to cook a piece like Eye of Round um, too rare, it doesn't develop a good meat flavor. But here it is. The what I consider a foolproof recipe for cooking a very moist and melt in your mouth eye of round. Like I said, preferably I wouldn't have cut into this until tomorrow, um, but my grandkids want it. This is the, the first piece. Look how yummy that looks. Even he's like juicy and elegant. There it is. Took me many, 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 many years. Um, let me think. I think I've been working on this recipe or at least this method. It's not really a recipe for at least, I don't know, 10 years. And I've talked to it with other food service professionals over the years and they were daunted to it's an incredibly affordable piece of meat and I would recommend that everybody use the best quality of meat that you can, preferably grass-fed if you can. All right, grandkids are coming back down, so I'm gonna end this video. Hope you make it. Hello. Oops. Okay, I was trying to film at the end and got cut off. But you can obviously see that I still have pinkish juices. The flavor of this um, beef is so beefy. It's like the beefiest, most scrumptious type of uh, flavor. I'm going on and on about it because like I said, I've, this is a recipe that I've really, and a cut of meat that um, a lot of people just no longer deal with, but it's so wonderful. And now all I have to do to make, if I wanted to make a hot sandwich, was kind of get everything assembled and heat through if I wanted it warm. I could put it in a panini certainly or something like that, or you could just serve it as a nice cold beef and let me know i'm telling you this is this is it this is it use a better knife than me and my my um lighting is really bad here but there seems to be noise in every direction all right i'm gonna finish making my rolls i'm also gonna make a horseradish um a horseradish aioli and i might add a little bit of uh wasabi cream that i had left over from when i made my um california roll bowls just to kind of get through that no waste cooking ah, i want to cut it this meat is so tender i have people calling me about this and my cooking buddies one of them being the great baking queen herself penny keaton follow her at penny pies penny's pies on instagram she's a, a heritage um baker 
of pies, a Heritage American Baker, her specialty is pies, but she specializes in all kinds of um, delicious desserts of all kinds and with a particular specialty in American desserts. All right, I'm gonna make my rolls. I have to roll them out, bake them, make my aioli. And I'm gonna take you through as much of that process as I can. Like I said, it's a busy Sunday. My adorable grandchildren left not too long ago. So they come for a couple of days and it takes a couple of months to clean up after them. No, just kidding. It does take a couple of days though. Okay, see you in a few. Okay, for my horseradish aioli, I'm just gonna use um, two to one, like one part horseradish. I'm using a creamy horseradish style and um, two parts mayo. Add salt and pepper to taste. spoon. Okay, this is where I'm going to determine if I'm going to want a um, little additional seasoning. Oh, I think it could use a little more horseradish. So I guess use equal parts, creamy horseradish cream and mayo. Okay, my um, washing machine is getting noisy again, but if you have a good Jewish deli or a good source of good fresh horseradish, go there and get it or order it online. We have so many wonderful purveyors of good quality horseradish. You can also use this meat if you cut it thinner to make um, like beef bowls or wraps or, or every kind of thing. Eat it just like this with a good pickle. And speaking of pickle, I think I'll put some cornichons in this sandwich slash roll. All right, here's my moment, my pause in the noise. Well, my big dream of showing you all my hot sandwich and all that went to pieces. Um, one, I didn't have cornichons, but I ended up just making my rolls. If you don't know what these are, these are Martha Stewart's cornmeal rolls. I have a video on that. And I'm just making my one of my husband's um, lunch components. I actually make them breakfast, but that's a separate thing. So all he wanted was that delicious horseradish aioli and I'm going to do this. I'm going to wrap it up. If you want, um, for his dinner sandwich, I put um, a French whole grain mustard, which was really delicious. And then all I do is wrap this in wax paper, put it in the fridge, and call it a day. You guys got to get with these beautiful rolls. Look at how scrumptious they are. All right, well, I jumped in the pool, did all kinds of stuff. I have a lemon cake coming out of the, a lemon pound cake coming out of the oven in just a couple of minutes. So until next time, um, make this or try it. If you want it a little bit more rare on the eye round, I guess you could uh, take off a half an hour um, on 300. but that's on you. All right, adios, good night.